आज अन्य क्लास होता कि यस सर बट नेटवर्क इश्यूज की वजह से सर क्लास आधे में ही खत्म हो गया ओके माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज आईपीओ फोर एंड ब्लॉक नंबर टू एंड द टॉपिक इज दैट इज टॉर्म ऑफ पेमेंट एंड फाइनेंसिंग स्ट्रेटेजीज एंड माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर दुर्गा माधव महापात्र लेक्चर इन कॉमर्स फकीर मोहन ऑटोनॉमस कॉलेज बालेश्वर एंड काउंसिलर ऑफ इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी इन फ्रम इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग माय पीपीटी थ्रू ऑनलाइन आल्सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव ऑलरेडी सम ऑफ द डिस्कशन एज रिगार्ड्स टू द international procedure and international documentation procedure we have already discussed but today's class this block number 2 contains there are five topics are there this is also a bigger uh, uh, particular block is there one is a uh, unit 6 is the term of payment unit 7 is related to exchange control regulation and facilities concerning exports and unit 8 is the export financing and uh, similarly another one is unit 9 export insurance and unit 10 that is also export finance there are uh, five topics are there one by one we have to discuss but before go through this uh, go through the particular topic i have always stated for the international business some of the important documents are necessary in preliminaries in earlier classes i have stated that is called as ic code is there or member of some of the council is there similarly i want to recap some of the briefs you see in my slide also there are different type of commercial documents which are listed for a management of a particular type of international business what type of commercial documents proforma invoice commercial invoice packing list shipping instruction intimation for in inspection certificate of inspection quality certificate of insurance shipping order mate receipt i have in last class i have discussed several times regarding mate receipt also bill of loading application of certificate of origin certificate of origin bills of exchange and shipment advice these are the essential document of these are called as a commercial documents we to go through my second slide that shows some of the document you may called as a regulatory document regulatory document number 1 is the gate pass 1 gate pass 2 and the second one is ar4 ar4 a form which is related to a central excise authorities or custom authorities some type of documentary ar4 or ar4 a forms are there another one is uh, that is another one fourth document is export application or document chalan or port trust copy of the shipping bill at the time of it is also prescribed by the port trust or receipt for payment of port charges vehicle ticket gr pp form is there flight payment insurance premium there are 10 documents are there my dear student the commercial document are 16 and the, the regulatory documents are only 10 and these documents some these 16 documents out of 16 commercial document out of 8 are you may called as a principal export document listen in your examination you write these document first and these documents are necessary for the exporting of the particular goods to a another country 
or you have to write these commercial documents as well as regulatory documents first 16 commercial documents out of first 8 are called as a principal export documents what are these principal export document these are the sum of uh, below lines you see in uh, in ppt there are these are called as a principal export documents but if you detail go through the exporting other documents it may classified into six parts documents related to goods documents related to transport documents related to payment listen payment documents related to inspection documents related to exchange control documents related to excisable goods my dear student these six documents another important for the export related documents are necessary for the exporting of the goods and services if you talk about documents related to goods some of the documents are required proforma invoice commercial invoice packing list and in documents related to transport related transport mean transporting of exporting shipping order mat receipt bill of lading air bill shipping bill marine insurance policy post parcel port trust document are necessary at the time of related payment the letter of credit bills of exchange bank certification for payment or document related to inspection that is a inspection document is necessary documents related to exchange control like as exchanging of uh, uh, currency foreign currency for these the guaranteed or remittance year form is there guaranteed remittance form or pp form is there value payable post or cod value payable post or or uh, cash on delivery sorry here is written is cash there is no cash that is a cash cash on delivery form is there or document related to excisable goods that is a4 form and form c is there but the question here is why i am pointed out these documents several times my dear student listen whenever one question comes what are the document is related to the exporting of the goods you have to write fast these are the commercial documents are the commercial invoices these are the uh, documents are required and for regulatory issues these are the documents are required apart from these these documents are to be divided into different form through inspection through exchange control through excisable goods or you may call as a transport you may call as a payment you may call as a related goods these are the six parts it is divided into the the goods are to be exporting by the exporter or sent to a particular individual or firm that is called as the importer or buyer any question any related question you have to write these documents when you write these document and everybody is understand the students really know about the what type of documents are to be required at the time of exporting of the goods so that i am always clear pointed out in my slides regarding the exporting of the documents but in books there is a yeah, haphazardly it can be shown in here and there but i am clearly mentioned on these documents my dear students but today's topic related to the unit 6 related to the concept of documentary credit but the question is why 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 we study this documentary credit is necessary my dear students there are different methods of payment are there in a different methods one method is a payment in advance is there another method is open account is there another method is documentary collection is there documentary collection it means documentary credit system is there another method is letter of credit is there another method is credit card is there another 
method is counter of trade is there there are different methods through which you can paid paid the particular amount at the time of the of the but the question is here sometimes exporter is unable to procure the order in advance payment the best alternative way is the documentary credit method it means one bank is there who is a intermediator in between two parties through undertaking for payment or soon after shipment shipment means after delivery of the goods you may called as a sometimes you read in your book that is a pre pre shipment credit another one is post shipment credit here shipment means loading of the goods pre shipment at the time of loading of the goods post shipment at the time of the goods are to be or sent to a or reach at a destination place to the importer or buyer and the agreed amount or with the term and condition that's co may be called as a sales contract exporting sale contract i have already discussed in previous classes and the letter from bank can stipulate a submission of the certain document amount is required for payment and that type of procedural approach are called as a documentary credit the question is here how it is possible the possible is first of all exporter ships the goods then exporter submits the draft or through bills of exchange or any type of bill of lading and the exporters bank transfer the document to the importers bank and the importer bank notifies about the goods or documents received then a payment can be made and then importers bank can release the bill of lading or any type of transferring the particular payment but here the question is that is necessary of uniform customer practices which related to the documentary credit is there that is called as ucp through which there is certain guidelines we can follow but the question is what are the documentary credits what really what it what it says means i am always pointed out that bank is a mediator in between two parties or here bank means the first point in my slide you see name of the issuing bank types of credit number ic number and uh, on behalf of the credit applicant who is applicant or buyer or amount or terms and condition expiry of the credit beneficiary through which these are called as otherwise some of the de brief details about the goods and some document is attached to like as a commercial invoice here here pointed out regarding the commercial invoice in when i am starting my class i am pointed out these are the documents so called as a commercial document and these are the document are called as a regulatory document whenever you write in your examination Uh, or any exporting of the goods these are documents you should write 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 then it should be the concept should be clear it means commercial document regulatory document and other six part of document in various parts or here similar similar same thing are to be shown in my slide the documents required usually are packing list insurance policy certificate inspection tray transport document bill of lading air oil bill there is different document related to transport document port shipment document price terms here there is a term is say, shows whether fob c and f and cif already we, i have discussed fob freight on board carriage and freight or carriage insurance and freight and these are the some of the terms through which the particular shipment can be made and whether the part shipment or transport is limited these are the conditions through which are called as a practices for the documentary credits but my dear students there are different kinds of letter of credits are there if you talk about letter of credit it is also a one way through which the particular bank can intermediate in between the uh, for the payment in a letter of credit is a necessary 
तो क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज लेटर ऑफ क्रेडिट इट इज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट व्हिच इज इशूड बाय द बैंक एंड फॉर प्रॉमिसेस टू द एक्सपोर्टर टू पे सर्टेन अमाउंट एट द टाइम ऑफ सेंडिंग द और एट द टाइम ऑफ of uh, all necessary formalities when it is specified will be clear enough and i can on behalf of with you i can pay that particular amount that is called as a really the uh, called as a letter of credit it means the bank has on behind regarding the exporting of the goods that is uh, that documentation of evidence is called as a letter of credit it may be irrecoverable irrecoverable letter of credit Which is may be called as a right to cancel or modify or credit. Confirm of letter of credit is there regarding payment. Registered credit is there. Regular in the continuity of the shipment of the goods by the seller. Revolving credit is there. Liable made by the seller for the regular basis. It can be payment can be made. Red clause letter or credit credit is there. In a red clause letter, it is also called as a The advance against the shipment also there red clause means against at the time of liquidated amount and some advance is there and transferable credit also there are some middleman who can transport the goods back to back letter of credit is there means letter of credit are different types some you may write only the names stand by credit or some guarantee is there deferred payment later on payment is there payment credit immediate payment is there acceptance credit with the terms and condition that acceptance can be made negotiation credit with negotiation the letter of credit can be prepared side and usance of credit according the term of credit fixed and under uh, resolving credit and transit credit there are 16 types of credit system through which A exporter can export the goods, and the on behalf of the exporter, the bank has an one of a called as a middleman, and who can look after for the transferable credit in time or paid the particular amount in time. That is the way through which the letter of credit is necessary. My dear students, if you talk about letter of credit. there is a there is a one rule is there that is called as uniform customs practices documentary credit so it what what does it mean letter of credit means it is not only evidence of document it is not only agreement to uh, agreementable of a document we may called as a, that is called as a bills of exchange that may be called as a commercial invoice that may be called as a Packing list, transport point, inspection, and insurance policy means within the letter of the credits, these document or letter should be attached. Then only the bank can can act as a middleman through which the particular goods can be can be sent to a uh, to the importer or buyer. Means through the payments can be also made. With the documentary conformity is there. That is called as a conformity of documents. And dear students, this is the overall concept of letter of credit, types of letter of credit, and how the particular letter of credit or uh, letter of uh, credit transaction can be focused on. But in Unit Seven, the topic is foreign exchange control regulation and facilities concerning exports. similarly we have a same things that we already discussed in previous class foreign exchange for fema fera act what it contains these are covered under this point of unit question is why the exchange control is necessary only the foreign exchange only meet the international commitment or to externalization of value of currency or to to uh, to economize us of the uh, um, uh, for the external economy pressures means to insulate insulate means here to to have an a, a maintain a proper decorum through which the particular exchange control can be done but the question is in your book it has written the foreign exchange management act 1999 1999 but here i am stated foreign exchange management act 2000 which is recent one and i have to discuss one by one same thing whatever you write in 99 or 
some similarities are there. There are different main features are there. What are these features? Related to payments, the FEMA, Foreign Exchange Management Act, and uh, there is a restriction regarding the people living in India, means the, the particular act restricted to the only India. And it also permission to the some of the restrict specific or general permissions are there. And exchange control regarding the current accounts are there related to restricted by the central government for the public interest also. And some of the uh, selling or drawing of the foreign exchange related to authorized person who are looking to the empower of a particular act is there. People living in India will be permitted to, to own or hold the immovable property, currency, security. These are covered under the foreign exchange management act is there. And exports needed to furnish means foreign exchange management act what says? It says these are the things. And some of the provisions are also there. What are these provisions? The section 3 is there. Says authorized person who undertake the turn deal with the foreign exchange. Section 3 says authorized person. And section 4 says holding of the foreign exchange by the in India or outside means an authority who is through which it can be act as outside also and provisions regarding section 5 says related to current account means current account means what type of transaction like as a foreign travel through foreign exchange is on education medical care of a parent spouse and children's these are the through which the expenses or foreign currency can be made under the current account means the expenses related activities like as a foreign travel, education, medical care of the parent or children's education, these are related to the expenses in connection to the current account or payment related to interest on loan or any type of short term loan also. And also capital account is also there. The RBI is fixed some of the limits related to capital account. What are these? Related to transfer of foreign security or transfer of foreign security by the Indian residents or transfer of any immobile property, these are related to capital account. It means these are the guidelines. We cannot change it. This is the section 6. And section 7 says related to goods and services. And section 8, it can show like as a regarding the authorized person. What it says? If the authorized person will be done on contravent the rule of RBI, he is liable to pay 10,000 penalty or 2,000 on every day of the contravention. Means if any deal to any money exchange, offshore exchange, he cannot uh, may any type of disobey or revoke of some authorization, then he has to pay. And section 13 to 15 is also related to contravention penalties. Section 18 also related to adjudication of the appeals also. And it means in relevance to these Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999, which is enacted, consolidated with a new type of act, which is frame or regulatory can be made, that is called as the Foreign Exchange Management Act 2000. And it is a, extends the whole of India regarding the to control the resident with contravention of the committed with the any of that. These are the related to means unit 7 is totally related to foreign exchange. Foreign exchange, foreign exchange management act 2000 and some other in your book there are several items are also there. There is a huge items but you have to reduce and uh, cocktail the particular items in a certain areas. In your examination point of view, some questions may be come up with the foreign exchange also. Another uni, in unit 8, the topic is called as a export finance. The question is finance. Anyone ask you a question of what is finance, you may call, call the finance is needed for every business organization or the commercial term of money is known as finance or you may call as a uh, the finance is also a lifeblood of the any business organization. Means the finance may be short term, medium term or long term. 
but here the finance means here export finance is only dealt by the sum of the indian commercial bank as well as the foreign commercial bank who are the member of foreign exchange dealers association listen listen very carefully those banks who are a member of foreign exchange dealers association they can only focus towards the exporting of the finance if you talk about it at balesa particular which branch is belongs to or deal with the exporting of finance only one or two branch are there which belongs to the particular industrial areas they put these particular bank may be the member of a foreign exchange dealers association and they looked at the export finance but here the question is rbi is also another point of view refinancing institutions also and exim bank is there export import bank of india is also there and also some commercial banks are also there some concessional rate interest can be made another important organization is there that is called as a ecgc ecgc means export credit and guarantee corporations also they are various policies various types of guarantees they are providing cover for commercial as well as some of the risky exposure like as a political is exposure involved with the export trade my dear student in your examination point of view always one question comes in the assignment you see what is ecgc and how it will be deal with the particular ecgc related to export finance but here the question is export finance is divided into two parts one is pre shipment credit i have already stated or you may call as a packing credit another one is post shipment credit these are the two way through which the export finance can be made and this pre shipment may be in indian rupees or may be in foreign currency post shipment credit may be in indian rupees may be foreign currency but the question is pre shipment means means at the time of loading it means any bank has look into the matter you see in my slide any loan to a exporter for finance for purchasing or processing or manufacturing or packing for this reason the pre shipment credit is given by the commercial bank for this purpose what is this purpose for purchasing for processing for manufacturing for exporting commodities for packing means some finance is required that is called as the pre shipment of credit at the time of exporting but pre shipment credit or pre shipment in a pre shipment credit another another way also there is there that is called as a may be called as a letter of credit similar point is arises it means it is also granted by the commercial bank immediately they are not payment immediately they are not back behind they are granted extension for the 90 days to 180 to 80 days or another extension of 90 days is there means 90 to 180 and plus 90 days extension is there for exporting such of goods this is a way also a pre shipment credit in a different way means well, there are two methods are there pre shipment credit immediate action oriented by the commercial bank purchasing processing manufacturing exporting packaging another pre shipment credit is granted by any commercial bank through given through 90 days to 180 days and and if adequate extension is also approval of another 90 days but the question is here sir what is pre shipment finance already i have discussed pre shipment finance means exporting for it's another way through exporting of finance another way of purchasing processing manufacturing packaging through which amount is required and that overseas buyer is confirmed for the particular type of pre shipment advice a finance or pre shipment credit is the similar line it is a loan it is a advance which is granted by the bank also 
for exporting it means amount is required or the credit is provided by the bank to exporter for financing for the exporting of the goods if you talk about pre shipment finance there is a two parties are there exporter is there and exporter it can be done through the foreign currency from commercial bank also another export from currency for raw material also and in this connection this pre shipment finance is also gone through there is gone through the in different commercial bank through please through hypothecation through export receipt there are some of the different type of letter credit instruments are there these are some of the instruments but my dear students banks means it is appropriate export credit or in a policy is there confirmed order is there letter of credit is there policy of credit ecgc is there through which the particular registration membership certificate is there through which the pre shipment can be done otherwise it is wrong same repetition is there but the question here is sometimes some uh, type of uh, letter of uh, red clause letters credit is also there some of the packing letters is there there are different other credits or uh, letters are there through which the pre shipment can be done another one is operational strategy how the pre shipment financing can be done pre shipment financing i have already stated manufacturing packaging or uh, or the goods can be examined through in different type of export packing credits what are to be means executing the order delivery schedule time of exporting the goods or, or any quantum of finance of arrangement of equal rate degree of arrangement export certificate credit these are through which the mechanism can be done through which immediate action can be taken into account for the underpacking of the particular pre shipment financing but here now i am discussing post shipment finance pre shipment is completed and post shipment the question is what is post shipment the goods are to be delivered but here any advance or any grant any credit which is by the institution for a exporter of a goods from india and date of extending the credit after shipment means the goods are to be delivered in a particular place means at the buyer's door or at the importer's door but immediate payment cannot be made means some time taken is required for date of realization of export proceedings or export proceeds that time taken for the payment immediate payment can be cannot be made some time taken is required for this reason some bills are prepared and that bills is called as a export bills or you may called as a drawn on foreign buyer means we are requesting please 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 and uh, we have to pay your amount but uh, with one bill is prepared and that bill is called as export bill and wait for the another 15 days or 10 days but but i am already stated the days will be 90 days to 180 days another extension of 90 days there are two methods are there in my slide you see export bill drawn on foreign buyers also export case incentives to be received by the exporters also means somehow the incentives necessary but in this connection here a pre shipment and post shipment can be solved through a another financial institution the government of india can form that is called as a and that is the origin of exim bank that is the origin of export import bank and the concept behind it only for the financial assistance for exports exports as well as imports but the question is some of the institutions which are which are to be look into this matter or who are the back behind of this bank rbi is there commercial bank is there ecgc is there export credit and guarantee corporation is there and idbi 
Industrial Development Bank of India is also there. But the question is, Exim Bank means that is a long term export finance. Exim Bank means that is a prime source of exporting of finance. Exim Bank means that is a look into the pre shipment and post shipment activities. But one student asks me, Sir, you have already discussed regarding Exim Bank. When the Exim Bank will be exist? What is the existence of Exim Bank? In the year of 1982, and it will be started in the year, in the month of first March 1982 at the headquarter at Mumbai. My dear student, question: RBI is the central bank and the bankers bank. There are different type of commercial banks are also there, like as a uh, public sector bank, private sector bank, foreign bank, yeah, and also cooperative banks also there. Nowadays, another two types of banks are to be plugged with uh, these three banks. Like as a one is called as a payment bank, another one is the small bank. But apart from these, some of the specialized banks are to be formed to revive the or to implement of the economic development of the country. What are these? Like as a CDB. If you talk about CDB. Small and Industrial Development Bank of India, he looks after only look into the small scale industries. If you talk about Exim, Export Import Bank of India, only looks into the foreign trade of exporting and importing. And some other banks are there. They, these are called as a sum of the specialized bank. If you talk about NABAD, National Board for uh, uh, Development of Agricultural, the, the, what is the what is the objective only for the upliftment of the agriculture but here exim bank of existence is the in first january or first march 1982 it is a wholly owned bank it promote financing facilitating promoting similar line and for the pre segment post segment activities can be done but there are several type of assistance scheme of the exim bank is there post segment term finance, pre segment term loans, export oriented loans to foreign government, importer, line of credit, relending banks, refinancing facility, small industries export wheels also, refinancing export wheels. These are the through which the particular bank can look into the matter. If you look at my slide, you see there is a one graphic diagram shows. What is the, the range of products and services related to Exim Bank are export marketing, pre shipment, post shipment. I am always focusing pre shipment and post shipment. Your concept should be clear, should be pre what is pre shipment and what is post shipment. Investment abroad, advisory services, import finance, export, these are the sum of the services. And if you talk about how the particular exit bank works, you see in my slide one graphics shows exit bank shows through a different parts. You see one is overseas borrower is there one part, another part is overall uh, overseas importer is there. It means and that that is through the on the lending case and exit bank is in mediator and one part Indian exporter is there. Another part is commercial bank is there. Means how the Exim Bank correlates with the commercial bank. How the Exim Bank correlates with the commercial bank. And it will be procedural flow chart through which the financing can be made. It means the Exim Bank can sign the agreement with the borrower and announces when effective. And the exporter can check the procedure or service fee and the bank negotiates with the contract of the importer and the importer can consultation and then can be made. It is a very easier way to understand the exim bank with relation to the overseas borrower, overseas importer, another one is commercial bank, so he has, he has a refinancing facility is there so that commercial bank is there, another one Indian exporter is there. But the, if you talk about in a detailed way, how it can be done? How it is? How the exim bank can do in a particular type of services? You see in my slide, very concept should be very clearly I am stating. You see, 
first of one is the export credit if related export credit related to projects it means buyers credit is there if it is related to projects buyers credit shipment guarantee exp, equipment finance is there mean it is related to projects if it is related to products line of credit pre shipment credit post shipment credit guarantee is there if it is related to service that is suppliers credit buyers credit and guarantee lc is there if it is my dear sir if it is related to export oriented unit there is also term loan is there there is a facilities there you see in the diagrammatical ua if and if it is related to value added services joint venture consultancy workshop seminars when you write in your examination this diagram if you put this diagram and uh, uh, the examiner can understand how the particular student can uh, put their effort to, uh, relates to the how the exim bank can on uh, goods are uh, providing the services in relation to export or credit in related to finance for export oriented units in relation to value added services my dear, dear student the recent development of export finance if there are different other ways are there like as a factoring services like as a forfeiting services are there not uh, i'm not putting detail way through the forfeiting and factoring in this connection these are the some other ways the services can be made through the uh, particular type of uh, financing services of a uh, exim bank another one is unit 9 is related to export finance the question is what is export finance related similar some points are to be <laughs> overlapping of one another the question is we export finance means one organization is important that organization known as eric eric to ecgc the question is what is eric export risk insurance corporation of india which is situated at bombay now in the year of 1964 ecgc is developed that is called as export credit and guarantee corporation is there in but in 1983 it is renamed that is called as export credit guarantee and corporation india limited is there it means ecgc is a one a company or it is a wholly owned uh, company by the government of india or under the control of administrative control of ministry of commerce or the board of directors should be represented as any government auditing or trade and services they are focusing in different ways through the exporting term of credit can be facilitated or some policies or some guidelines they are in focused with the by the ecgc means ecgc is a one organization after bank this is a one institution who is back behind of exporting or importing of the services goods or services my dear student there are different type of uh, uh, four type of groups uh, related to ecgc or uh, the services four type of services groups are there standard policies there specific policy design to uh in a different type of payment plan also is there financing guarantee facilities there special schemes are also there if you talk about a standard policy i have discussed in detail way if you see in my slide standard policy means ecgc has designed a different type of uh, standard policies related to comprehensive related to political related to contract comprehensive risk related to contract political risk it means related to shipment there are two parts comprehensive political related to contract it is divided into two parts one is comprehensive another one is political but here the question is what is political means political understanding or stability that's it these are called as a risk exposure of a particular standard policy is required my dear student if you talk about in specific policy same thing or related to contract and related to segment is there 
if related to financial guarantee similar other type of guarantee schemes are there if you talk about special schemes there are different schemes like as a buyer's credit line credit overseas instruments are there it means my question here question is or my point is mean to co to cover both commercial and political point of view on the, from the date of shipment it means political stability is a one of a important factor at the time of a shipping of any goods otherwise sometimes the goods are not be reached at a particular destination place and due to the only the instability of political scenario of a particular country my dear student here the contracts is necessary here the shipment is necessary in in abound by the particular standard policies there are in your book you see similar other policies are there same contract and shipment it can divide in different parts if you talk about financial guarantee there are six there are different six types of guarantees are there in my ppt you see there is one is packing credit guarantee export production guarantee post shipment guarantee financial guarantee performance guarantee there are different guarantees are there through which the particular type of ecgc has on page on three fourth of the particular losses or it means there are they, they also look into the matter of the by the ecgc means ecgc has guaranteed to protect the bank from these losses or lending to the exports due to this type of guarantee schemes they have to frame frame out another one is my dear students and the last part is that is called as a import finance that is unit 10 if you talk about the import finance there is a need of for uh, what is import finance my dear students if you talk about to uh, import finance first you go through the export finance then go to uh, then i have put the import finance it means there is some procurement, refinancing, availability of fund, other facilities are also there. In export, then I am go through the uh, import. If we talk about export finance, similarly, technological development, basic term, condition, balance growth, these are necessary for the exporting of a particular goods and export finance is required. It means uh, there is a need of sales promotion, there is a need of uh, customer service, there is a need of uh, medium long term needs which are to be needed but if you talk about in a detailed way through the export finance another one is short term medium term long range are there through which the importance of short term finance is also focused in a different way and their requirement also there but in a regulatory framework there are different type of regulatory networks are there what are these regulatory networks like as a one is foreign trade development regulation act 1993 which is by dgft once in in my class sometimes one student asks me what is dgft dgft means director general foreign trade director general foreign trade and uh, which is replacing earlier as a export import control act and the which is chief controller of uh, import and exporting also and foreign exchange management act there in 99 and 2000 which i have, I have today in today's class i have already discussed indian custom and excise act is there 1962 is there but certainly the foreign exchange dealers association is there fedi i am already stated uniform customs and practice documentary credit should be there which is formulated the work by the international chamber of commerce paris and it is a global uh, assertance is there and the uh, world trade organization can membership of a particular uh, related to the particular organization and always i'm only not only i'm focusing but also in this scenario i want to only one thing these are the basic uh, guidelines as relates to the particular of uh, exporting or importing of the sale of goods and services but uh, question uh, here the question is WTO is a no doubt uh, uh, means uh, put a policy regarding the restriction of the uh, restriction guidelines can be removed through 
draw the different type of uh, uh, means uh, policy can be made here yes, for the removing of the some of the evidence should be there. But in such scenario, the particular company or particular you may call as an organization can exporting there are different policy guidelines should be there and that guidelines can be applied through the foreign exchange dealers association as well as uniform uh, customs practice for the documentary credit uh, is also required but somehow some of the uh, if you talk about some of the roles of uh, credit and guarantee corporation there are different it is called not only a wholly owned uh, government organization but also some uh, issuing of insurance policies to the exporters it is also a one part issuing of financial guarantees to the bank it is also a one part of ecgc and uh, apart from these some policies related to the financing of exports like as in classified in a different way like as a credit insurance policy like as a maturity of factoring uh, i am pointed out in factoring also factoring means it is a mediator when you purchase a, uh, a motorcycle from a showroom there uh, in this connection one uh, one mediator is there through which the payment plan can be made that is called as a factoring or factor you may call that as a uh, that type of institution or financial institution that's called as a factoring also there another one is guarantee to banks also there special schemes are also there these are the overall issues related to ecgc ecgc wow. means export credit and guarantee corporations but my point is also another part related to if you talk about the exim bank there is a different type of exporting bill rediscounting bill facility they are also uh, they are also focusing relating to exporting and they are also focusing the refinance of export uh, suppliers credit also or they are also uh, facilities related to overall entities also there in like as a buyers credit buyers credit related to the overseas buyer can avail the buyers credit from the exim bank also another one is a line of credit facilities also there sometimes i i have written some line of credit it means under the line of credit the exim bank can grant credit to overseas financial institution also another uh, in exim bank also uh, the put in some other way they are also focusing some lending program facilities also there means exim bank has an uh, uh, have an a greater role like as a pre shipment credit facilities another is the foreign currency uh, or pre shipment credit also there and export of creditors uh, credit is there or finance on cons consultancy and technology facilities also there and apart from these some of the services also related to export or the exim bank can provide like as a guarantee facilities like as a forfeiting facility forfeiting it is also a financial mechanism through which the credit sell to uh, converted into cash sell in a different way that is also a by the particular of uh, by the exim bank and even if if i am talk about uh, um, another topic related to in your book one part is there ecgc also uh, they are focusing even if some of the standard policy or comprehensive policy or commercial risk exposure or political risk i am talking about uh, some of the political risk if you talk about uh, war if you talk about civil war if you talk about any type of revolution if you talk about um, in type of uh, imposition or restriction by the government or uh, some of the additional handling um, in the, like as a, in a corona time you see some of the tablets which are to be restricted for the exporting the, the, in this connection there is this is the way through ecgc can solve in a different way like as a blocking or delaying of the uh, transfer of uh, goods or any type of funds by the buyer also means some of the uh, point, even if ECGC uh, generally fixes a, 
maximum liability of a each policy document through which the particular type of exporting can be can be uh, done to, in a successful manner also but some of the expo small exporter policies are also there in your book one point is there that is small exporters policy the question is here what is the small exporters policy and why, how the ecgc deal to the some exporters policy it means it has an encourage the small exporters also and some policies are also issued and that type of export turnover next 12 month which does not 50 lakhs means which does not 50 lakhs and these policies are to be issued and another one is it has a it has a protect from 100% political risk also and a specific similar facility is also there and buyer wise policy they also maintain buyer wise policy means each buyer has a different policy they are also procured in a small exports policy and consignment exports policy also they can make consignment on specific export of exporting of goods on consignment basis and buyers exposure policy is also there and also software project policy is there software project policy or it means there is a non payment of indian exporters provide on software services it enabled services should be there and also construction works policy here construction works means the contractor can execute the particular policy in terms of in different way and specific policy for supply of Hello.
बाय बाय